Okay, we have a nice integral here sent to me by Harry. We have the integral from zero to infinity of x squared over e to the x minus one dx. Okay, at first I was trying to do this with integration by parts. I thought maybe I can differentiate x squared. That's no problem. I can also integrate like one over e to the x minus one. And that's also no problem. But then after that, you're gonna to need to integrate again and again. And it seemed like it was just going in circles. So I kind of gave up on that. I don't even know if it works that way. And what I wanted to do instead was kind of notice the similarity here to something like the geometric series. For our geometric series formula, we have one over one minus X is gonna be the same thing as the sum from N equals zero to infinity of X to the N. So if I took this and multiplied it by minus one, brought a minus out front, then this whole thing, we could write this as something like one over one minus e to the x, and then plug it in over here. The trouble is we have this condition on this that we need the absolute value of x to be less than one. So when we come over here, if we try this, well, we have some idea what our x value is just from the balance on the integral. We're going from zero to infinity. The problem here is even when x is at one, well, like even e to the one, this is already greater than one. So this is gonna fail for like almost all the values. It's only gonna work for some values between zero and one. So because we don't have this convergence, this is gonna fail, but we can still kind of try to make this work. What I can do is, what if I just multiply in by e minus x here? So now our integral is gonna become x squared e minus x but the denominator now is one minus e minus x dx. So what I can do is let's kind of, let's ignore the numerator for a moment. We'll just kind of create a one. And for our geometric series, we'll just use this. So then if we have one over one minus e minus x, use the formula on this, then we have like e minus x is our input. Now when we do our convergence test here, we want the absolute value e minus x to always be less than one. Now this is gonna work. As the x values are going off to infinity, this is gonna be going to zero. Technically you kind of have an issue at zero, but if you plug zero in here, this is gonna be one, which is not less than one. But the thing is on an integral, you don't have to really worry about what happens at the balance. You can look at zero as like zero plus, and then this is gonna be fine. So that since we have our convergence on this, let's take this value right here. We'll take this sum and we'll plug it in for everything in blue right here. Now from here, in order to clean this up a little bit, let's take everything out front here. This is gonna be a constant with respect to the series. So I can actually just take this and multiply it in and kind of come, so we can kind of consolidate everything. So what's gonna happen is we're still integrating zero to infinity. Then we'll just leave the x squared, but then here we've got the same base of e on these. So I can write that part as e minus x to the n plus, e minus x times n plus one here. And then from here, what I want to do is let's just swap the integral in the series. We're okay to do this here because we've already established we were using geometric series. So we have absolute convergence over here. So we can do this swap, which is going to allow me to just integrate this part over here. And now at this point, we can just do this integral. You could use integration by parts on it, but I like to use Laplace transforms. You'll notice it's set up. It's set up pretty much perfect for a Laplace transform. The one thing I need to deal with this exponent right here, this n plus one, Let's kind of substitute that just temporarily to make it really clear what we're doing. So I'll write this n plus one as an s. We have e minus sx. And just to be clear that I'm not changing it, I'm just saying s is gonna be the same thing as n plus one. We don't need to do any like u substitution because this is just constant values we're playing with. And so now everything right here, this is all just gonna be the Laplace transform of x squared. And we have a formula for this we can use we have this formula, we can say the Laplace transform of, let's write it as t to the n. This is gonna be the same thing as s to the n plus one over n factorial. But let's not confuse this n with the n we have up here. We're just using our n is gonna be equal to two here, the exponent on the x. So let's see how this is gonna work. Using this formula, we're gonna have s to the n plus one, where n is two, so we're gonna have s cubed here. And then n factorial, that's just gonna be two factorial or just two. But then let's put this right back in the terms of n, so our s value being n plus one, I can rewrite this. And now we're really close to our solution. Let's take this two and bring it out front. That's just a constant, so we'll have the two out front on the sum. And then on the sum, let's just do an index change because I don't like having an n plus one here. 
If I get to get this back to n, I can just subtract one here, and all I need to do is add one on the index. So what's gonna happen is now we're going from n equals one to infinity, and this is all gonna become just one over n cubed. But now I don't have a way to get an exact value for this series right here. This, you'll notice, this is just gonna be the same thing as the Riemann zeta function at three. So I'll try to draw this symbol, but I'm pretty terrible at it. It's something. And so if I could draw this symbol, I could, but I just don't know how to draw this type of Z thing. Maybe I need to find, maybe I need to work on this, but it's something like that. That's terrible. But this thing is the Riemann zeta function at three. The approximate value of this is something like 1.202. And we're gonna have this two up front. So for my final solution of this, we just get two times the Riemann zeta function of three. So there you go. I guess technically if we wanted an estimate for the whole thing, if Riemann zeta function of three is 1.202, this is gonna be something like 2.404 something. Anyway, thought it was a really good problem. Thanks again to Harry for suggesting it. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.